Warp drive active. Oh my god. Motherfucker. Warp drive active.
Warp drive active.
warp drive active. Active.
warp drive active. drive active. Okay, we're Security status has been lowered. We're blowing up this boss, I guess. This is fun. We're blowing up a boss and there's like six dudes in there. We're going to get them too.
A module has run out of charges. I'm gonna pee before the battle starts. <clears throat> I'll be right back. Drones aren't firing. Fire drones. A module has run out of charges. Oh. Drones in, drones in. The module has run out of charges.
A module has run out of charges. drive active. Cloaking.
Here we go, we got our fight. Warp drive active. And now he's warping us. Why can't we kill the revelation? No. Damn it. We could have just killed them. Why aren't we killing this?
The system in question is R3 Attack K7 K. We don't know what's going to go on. We aren't we aren't in a pocket. Which is good. Kind of interesting. Man, it's tense. They showed up with nine capitals. What the fuck can we do? But then, then they ran. They ran. Which, honestly, as far as outcomes go, I don't mind that. That's a show of superior force. It's tense.
Docking request accepted. So now we're docked up and we're kind of trapped here. So they say dock and leave clone here. Okay, now I've got to go home. get to play fallout with my friend i'm an idiot but i mean like i don't know we did what we needed to do here though so now i just detonate back to dyra i guess and then i fly safe home We did get two kills, but these guys kind of faked us out and then pulled the big guns. It was annoying. They, like, showed up and played armor with fucking machine guns and stuff and helicopters. And we were like, what the fuck? You know? They were like, nine capitals, okay. And, and like, all right, you win. But this was good. It was a good session.
Okay, so I guess I'm good here. I, I was just going to post, I guess. But I mean, I guess I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep crafting. Never mind. I was not ready to leave. I don't know why I did. I felt bad. I dissed my friend tonight. And I feel so bad. But I mean, like, eh. Like, I didn't know he was going to call an op, you know? I had no fucking clue. No clue at all. Now, are you detonating or what? Yeah. I don't know why you didn't fucking trigger. Whatever. Ah. Uh... Copper. And good, and we'll just get back to work, yep. And then, so this was fun. I, I represented my corp, and I did what I was supposed to do. Good fight. Yeah. Ooh, look, it's 50 grand for some reason. Oh, here we go. Tick, 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 tick. Clone activated. That hell of a fella going strong. Okay, thank you. Gonna leave the heart. This was good. I mean, I didn't lose anything, so I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm gonna fleet, leave this fleet, and, uh, and now we're gonna go home. Locations, locations. Locations, personal locations of home, 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 set destination for shorter, shorter. Now we could do this in 29, but I mean, it's about the same really to just do 47, you know? Can I get like a shuttle here? Do I have a shuttle here? I do. I've got a council diplo shuttle here. Let's get the fuck out of here. It's good shit. Good, good op. I enjoyed it immensely. Great op. Autopilot engaged. Warping to Stargate. Warp drive active.
approaching Stargate. Autopilot jumping. Warp drive active, warping to Stargate. Okay, now I jump for like two hours. Let's get 50 grand. Three oh one six twelve. Wow! Suddenly, people bought mithril sheets today. I guess that's cool. Well, there's a lot of money I didn't really expect. That's good. I have space to sell now, and that's I'm very happy about that. I'll make a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot back. Warping to Stargate. Oh, I need to go to Jita actually. As my contract did not sell, which is annoying. I was just making a new one. <laughs> you know? Or, I would just sell everything. I don't know. I could just sell everything. It doesn't frankly matter. Approaching Stargate. Autopilot jumping. Warping to Stargate. Warp drive active. Fun off. Jumping. Uh, yeah. I'll go back Walking into New World, I guess. Yeah. Warp drive active. Or I can move my rust ship, I guess. I bet I got raided or something. I don't know. I don't frankly care. But yeah. Okay, so this op ended. Um, so thank you so much guys. I appreciate it. Um, sorry to, 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 for it to end here, but, uh, thank you so much for your time and, uh, thank you so much. And, um, I will end it Approaching here. Just a reminder, started. you've been watching Scott cat live It'll go back to recording here, but, uh, you know, the, 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 the streaming session is done with the end of the op. Uh, we like, we didn't really lose anything, which is cool. You know, I would say that's how I look at it. Auto it's like, we didn't lose jumping. anything. So I love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, click on the cast face to donate. Come to skycat.live. I'm a full-time variety gamer all day every day. Put me on in the background. This nine-hour session, it'll, it'll be 12 to 14 by the end of it, uh, will be um, placed on my channel in the over the next day. And yesterday's session is, is uh, finishing up uh, right now. Uh, Got to pull that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're through to number two or three or four. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, so, yep. And so as those go up, uh, I'll post this Stargate. one. And, uh, yep. And finish tonight. It's looking like it's like a day behind each time I post like 14 hours. So it's taken a while for YouTube to upload, but it's okay. Yeah. Um, and, uh, thank you so much for your time. I love you guys. Thank Auto you so much. Jumping. And, uh, we'll end the stream here and finish recording the rest of the session, which will be posted to my stream tomorrow. Thank you so much for your time. I love you guys. Bye. Warping to Stargate. Warp drive active.
and uh, I'm back recording here. I can pause if I need to, and I'm off stream. We did a good up, but nothing happened. Goodbye. And uh, so, stocking. yeah, nice. I'm up to 325 now, and that's just off my stuff. I, like, I made a bunch of sales today. They've been kind of, like, hang, like, hanging out, like, sort of, like, not buying. But now they did. They bought everything I had. And so we'll say, I want to bump, bump the price, So, but I mean, I want to make sales too, so I don't care. I'll sell for 21. So, um, I'm going to aim on, so I don't tease people, because I'm not really available, unfortunately. Moving to Stargate. Warp drive active. Oh, yep. Now we're in. My camp was abandoned. Okay. Yeah, yeah let's put a new one down. Approaching Stargate. We have three territory standings. Nice. Uh, territory standings. Ebon scale reach. Ebon scale reach. Autopilot I, get, I think it should always be storage. And then standing game, right? Which is standing game. Okay, good. And now we gotta switch the camera so it looks better. There we go. Okay, I'm sorry I missed my friend. I feel feel really bad, but I mean, eh, some days it just some days it go, some days it don't. Unfortunately, I feel bad. I'm like, ah, I wanna play, but. Approaching Stargate. It's honest. Autopilot jumping. Get me with that. Moving to Stargate. Warp drive active. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, oh, I am too far. Where am I? I went a little too far. I am going in the guild. Maintenance at 11 p.m. No. Oh my god, that's in 40 minutes. Damn it. Oh, that's okay. I'll play some rest. Autopilot jumping. I'm here to make some money, like a lot of money. Right now, I have 1,250. Here to kill a lot of gators and pick stuff. Yeah, like that wire fire burr. Oh god, I, do I have three of them? I do, I think. It's so stupid. Three of them. I don't even want three of them. I don't, I mean, I don't know. Three of them's too much. Get gone. Yeah, if you want to fight me, I'll fight you. Yeah, like, but aren't you retreating? Yeah. And I don't know why three needs aggro. It seems, like, excessive, you know? It seems excessive to me. Expensive stuff, but I have to kill you one by one. Oh, my mouse went off the screen. Why? Please don't do that. Ah. 
is good, but it's not that good. Scary hot. Um, what was that? That was dumb is what it was. Why three of them? That's ridiculous. That's so stupid. Ah. so annoying yes you ah you were supposed to reset it and you didn't and it damn near got me killed you fucking dick die 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 ah, ah. roll 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 okay roll through whoa yep you fucking asshole uh i don't want to die though oh god i don't want to die i don't want to die i don't want to die Go. Yeah, I got all three of them, but it was annoying. Okay, good call on bailing. Didn't have the numbers. They eventually mustered them. I like the bridge actually, it keeps me focused. I forgot to loot the damn silkweed while they were on reset. They're gonna pop on top of me. Ah, you fucking dick. Oh my god, it's already two of them. Why is it two? It's so annoying. Got me these gators and I got this silk weave. Or wire fiber, I mean. But yeah, there's like a lot here. Like right here. Oh my god, you're, you're so annoying. Sweet. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, I'll come help you. Yeah, 
Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, it was a good game. I have a very high opinion of it. My frames keep dropping because every time the damn ship, every time the damn ship jumps. Ah. Spin fiber. I'd have deep dived it. Survival takes so much learning. Trap base, yeah. Rust, you have to hide the battery. <laughs> yeah, I like height. Yeah, I like height's good. Oh my god, why did you give me three of them again? Ah! Fuck. Damn it, why three? You shouldn't give me three of them. They're already insane at one of them. Very good. Yeah, that game has better zombies, I think. Well, no, I don't know. They're both good. They're both, they're, they're like separate games. They're different games. Why do you constantly put three on me? I can't handle three. I could probably do two, but three is insane. 
That's like fighting a fucking game boss by yourself or something. It's insanely difficult. It's I used to watch this lady, Cat's Purr. She blew my mind. I'll link my favorite one. Shang Tower, one of the tallest and deadliest points of interest in Seven Days to Die. Feared and respected by even the most seasoned of players. Tough to clear even when armed to the teeth. But imagine entering the tower with a measly little day one character. No skills, no armor, no weapons, no food, and no escape. Surviving only on whatever you can loot, scrap, or salvage inside the confines of the tower. No deaths allowed, and the only way out, and to ultimately complete the challenge, is by constructing a gyrocopter and flying off the roof. That is, if you manage to find the needed materials and survive long enough to make it. Remember, resources are limited. It's not like you can go outside chopping trees and mining iron. Oh, no, 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 no. You have to make do with whatever the tower and your luck with the RNG provides. This, my friend. How much till you get to the tower?
Maybe I'll just sell all of those items piecemeal now. I won so many of them on, on auction. I want to post all of them for 10 mil and just wait. I want to post all of it for 10 mil. Everything there for 10 mil. And just see if I pull like billions, you know? I don't know. There's a lot of different ways to look at that, that, that horde that I'm sitting on. I should just keep building it. Damn, this game's gonna go down at 11, but I don't care. I'll play Rust for like three or four hours. That's totally fine. Oh, you can just sidestep, hit, hit, sidestep, hit, hit. Okay, I didn't really understand what the combo was. I suppose I should watch a rapier video and see what's possible. But I mean, like, I don't know if there's much out there. I'll have to go look. Look, I'm, I'm up to, like, goddamn 651. I should start chopping wood. Damn, I, I came down here for, for, uh... Ooh, I mean, I'm getting lots of good stuff here, I would say. I can't move, you keep dropping frames. Wow, I didn't realize how good that was. It's good for PvE. It's not really good for PvP. I love loading spine fish. Fucking awesome. And spin fiber. Two of them. Nice. It's good money. Mm, spin fiber. A lot of it. It's gonna make me a lot of money. Oh, look. There's even more good stuff. I love the river. The river's so bountiful. What? Oh, damn it. Ah. Oh, I see what the combo is. I didn't really realize that, like, how uh, powerful that is. That's actually fucking strong. Uh. 
you might really like. stuff. Wow, that, that is strong, I gotta say. It is strong. really like rapier now that I've used it more but it took me a long time to understand what it was or like oh my god now I think Tondo might be better than I thought I'm realizing now that I'm a bit more of a blood uh yeah like kind of a blood guy or no I guess that's flurry is it oh no I guess it's is it Reaper that a bit of struck through this counter? The bit of the, the staggering is stunning. Then you are briefly in bottle for a successful repost. But it's. Yeah, no, I think this is a better spec, actually. I like this spec, but I, I understand now that Tondo might be better than Flash. Because Tondo's up all the time. Yeah, I like Flash. It's actually dope. But I mean, like, I don't know. T well, but, like, Tondo doesn't really do anything, but it starts to stack, I think. Tondo is actually really interesting. That has a long cooldown. Yeah, I like Flurry too much, though. Flurry's so aggro. God, it takes so long to learn this game. Get out of it. Get out of it. Ah.
dead. I mean, why five? It's like insane. That's insane. It's not me. It's you. You as a developer. It's your problem. That is not me. It's you. I don't know why you gave me that many months. Now I kind of want to spec for the rapier now because I kind of like the rapier. I don't care how much damage the bow does. Rapier with a life stab might be really fucking strong, actually. Like, I don't know. The spear is good, but it doesn't really... Like, I need to put a carnelian gem in this thing, but I don't have enough. I don't have enough gold for that. That's why I'm out here. So I can put a fucking drain gem in the spear and it would do a lot better for me. I should put on heavy armor. I take too much damage otherwise. It's so annoying. Maybe I should go life staff rapier. Yeah, maybe I should put on buffs and stuff actually because it's like yeah, everything's off me now. You, 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 and you, and I'm going to sing a song. Decidedly dexterous E. Did you put it on easy? It seems easy. I don't know. Maybe not. Stop. Stop you. like that move very much i like these two moves but i don't like the other one i don't i've never really liked um sweep i wish skewer was better i think i'll respec
It's an interesting thing, and then next level I get this thing. Yeah, it sounds good. I think I like this one more. Yeah, I just do. Cactus flesh. I should be technically. Yeah, but I should be in my my um good stuff. Oh my god, how much did I aggro? Is it only one? Oh my god, get out. Oh god, I'm in the wrong spec. No, no, I can't fight him like this. Maybe I can. I don't know. Let's see if I can fight these. I don't think I can. I think I'm gonna die. Maybe I should go Rapier or Void Staff? That might be actually kind of, like, viable, I guess. Roll, roll. Get the heals. Get them down. Yep. Roll, roll. Go, go. Oh. We stand on this and we try and kill, kill my pretty kill, kill. Kill, 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 kill. Oh. You're so annoying. Die, 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 die. Got one, got one. Heal. Die, you. Got the other. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a strong combo, Life Stat Void. void. It's interesting. I did it with the bad armor, too. Those things hurt. I'm getting good at this game. I like this game. It feels like it has, it has a lot of, like, skill caps and stuff, you know? I don't know. This armor is not really acceptable for this area, though. I'm gonna get all that spin fiber. Look how fast it respawns, and I can just sit up there and get leather and spin fiber and get all the way full. Oh god! I ah! Every time I use it, I lose, I lose frames. It's so annoying. Get out! Get out! Get out of this! You're so annoying. Ah! Ah, you're so annoying. I down two of them, nice. You're better at this. My god, there's a fucking gator right there. There's so much spin fiber and all this shit right here. Can I get around them and just loot it? No. Oh god. Get out of it. Get out of it. You're so annoying. There, I cracked him. Fuck him. Keep losing frames. It's so annoying. Oh, 
Ah, roll, roll. Oh, you're so annoying. Oh god, I have another one now. Oh my man. There, I got one. You're so annoying. Stab. Stab. No, get out of it. No, 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 no. Mm. Oh my god, I got another one. I got another one. Heal, 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 heal. Oh my god, you're so annoying. Get out of it. Ah. You're so annoying. What does Rapier take? It's it's like uh oh yeah, Dex and Int. Fuck. Dex and Int. What else in, in in this uses Dex and Int? Strength and Dex. What else is Dex and Int? Is it uh is it is it uh Blunderbuss? Strength and Int. Dex and Int. Uh Dex and Strength. Dex and Int Strength. Dex and Int. What else would that be? Is it that? Dex and Int. Oh, it's Musket. Musket and Rapier. I mean, I could see Musket working. Yeah, I would just like ch chunk down and stuff. Ah, you fucking dicks. Dicks. Under maintenance. No wonder I'm getting all those weird like pauses and everything. Okay. Well, cool. Hey, I'm back in in Jita. I have all this loot to worry about, which is insane. I kind of want to like go and, and and just do everything again. Yeah, let's just go post it for fifteen to twenty five. How many is that? Look, I don't know even. How many is that? That's like 179. That's cool. They'll let you like batch like that. Yeah, they will. Now, did you do all of my boosters? No, just the ones that I was going to sell. How much is that? That's five bill worth. So, I'm going to drop it down to here. And that's 308. Maybe I can batch like post again. Wait, what? No. I want you to sort by group so I can get all of the stuff that isn't the containers in one click. It's so annoying. Yep, see, there's all that stuff up here. No, I think I like the other way better, and we'll just keep doing clicks. It's all right. I'll do 500 clicks. I don't mind. All of that, and then oh, you know, I totally spaced it, but. I need to run my skins before I do any of this. <laughs> I spaced that. I totally spaced that part of it. Yeah. So activate any of these 101 licenses that I don't have. Yeah, there you go. Like, oh my god, it's insane. Like, how much is that really? It's like 7 billion and shit. It's like 7 billion, so so what we do we go all the way 
get to the top again and we go all the way down i could just post everything in the list Oh, I know, I know what I can do. I can go all the way down to like here or something. Yeah, you know, I guess I can do the whole list again. And just undo all of the uh or i don't know let, let's sort by group again and we'll we'll go we'll go looking for for anything that's like yeah like two like i don't know maybe i should just keep it all maybe i should just keep it all and i will wait i'm gonna i'm gonna wait i mean i could sell it all he sold me a lot of really good stuff but he's seeing that the, the finding buyers is, is kind of crazy. I mean, I, I could do a big batch here, I guess. Yeah, we can just go all the way through. Yep, to here. That is 297 items, and I'll just keep going. No, I don't want that in there. Oh, did you fuck it all up? You did. Drop from the bottom and go all the way up. It's fine. Drop from the bottom and go all the way up to the containers and let's just see what all that is. I'm just gonna slap a fucking like a price tag on it. Ten bill, all right? My god, it just goes on forever. Yep, right here to 471. And then we'll come up here. And we'll just include the most expensive rest of it. Yep, and I want to put this up for 10 buyout, 15. I want to do an, a public auction. Next. Yep, next. And starting bid will be... Seven five, and the buyout price will be fifteen. And we'll see if I can, if I can get that. And the auction time is two weeks. Value unknown. And I'll just go on a cheaper price. Yep. Next. Creating. And now I feel better. I've like posted all of that. Now I have 200 items left. 
which I just want to post in another random auction. And this one I'll put up for five bill. There, all the way through to this. Yep. Yep, perfect. And then I want to create another contract. Right? Create contract with another 268. This one's going to be 2.5 bill. I want 2.5 bill. Oops, no, wait. Yep. To five. Value unknown. Yep. And I'll I'll post two contracts that hopefully sell. And if they don't, oh well, I'll just keep posting them until they do. I, I thought I would I would have done better by now, but there we go. And if, and if they both sell, that's 22 bill, exactly what I wanted before. You know, that's fine. Hey, look at all that shit, man. It's all kinds of BPOs and skins and fucking crazy shit. And value on now. Yep. Close and I'll just try and get my bids and all that and that's good now I feel a lot better I repost it and I'm feeling good and I can just put it all off for two more weeks and just keep buying stuff you know I'm doing great hey look at all that master at arms sitting right there 35 of them doing great uh, so now um, US dollars and is stable. And we're backing by industrial cloud and production. What are we talking about here? Are you talking to each other? Yeah. Oops. Oh, this thing has charged finally. So new world went down. I'm gonna load rest, I guess. Wait, oh no, wait. This uh, uh, <coughs> oh, did we patch and get done already? I think you did, huh? Oh no, world under maintenance. Okay, for 11 p.m. for a patch, huh? They're patching something. I don't care. Well, let's leave and let's go to rest. Um, how long have I been doing this? Ten hours, not bad. We can keep going. New world did update, I guess. Maybe I'll just update New World and go back in. I don't know. I should play Rust, but I mean, eh, I'm enjoying Rust, but I don't need to. I'm doing great. Yep, we're downloading this New World patch. Uh, wish I had Metro Exodus because I heard it was actually cool. It was like an open world that was good, but yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I don't have a location. So now that we're safe, I go back to home. Home, 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 home. Okay, now we look at the vendor and we see copper and silver, but it's too expensive. How much room do I have? I can fit like another whole thing of copper. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, let me get a, a channel for you there. Oops, copper. Okay, so then we keep going. Oh, yeller. Yep. <sighs> you guys sound like
Fox 31, Denver, Colorado. Interesting. What's this? Okay. Uh, gonna load the old Rust. Oh well, New World is patching, but it's like reserving space and taking forever. So while you do this, I will play Rust. I could play Hogwarts. <laughs> I bought Hogwarts. God damn it, man. These beers go too quick. It's so annoying. Thank you, Rye Games. Have like, there are hundreds to your of dead games scattered all across the internet, like this 2007 Xbox shooter game called Shadow Run that is still alive today yeah. inside a wow. smaller community. He just deflected my bullets. I found Shadow Run from a recommendation Chris made in my Twitter DMs, but I also found five other dead games with review. Rising Storm to. ranging from incredible to genuinely catastrophic and today we're going to explore day one gary's incident is a pc survival game developed and published by wild games day one gary's incident every last oh one of God. them rising storm 2 yeah i don't know anything about this game yes, yeah. the first game was something every single one of you have repeatedly recommended to me for months 
Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. In 2017, Tripwire Interactive and Antimatter Games created a Vietnamese successor to Red Orchestra 2, and the first two playtests went incredibly well. And then when the game released to the public on the 30th of May 2017, over 24,000 people were playing it at once. A record that still stands till today, alongside its 87% positive review score. For the next couple years, the player count hovered in the thousands. Even 2019 was a reasonably good year for Rising Storm, with maps like Da Nang and Khe Sang being added to the game for the first time. But on the 23rd of September, the majority developers' antimatter games were acquired by Toadman and announced they'd be working exclusively on a new project, leaving Rising Storm 2 behind. This left Tripwire Interactive in full control of Rising Storm 2's future. But in 2021, they effectively abandoned it themselves, and as a result of that and the numerous bugs and issues like the broken voice chat, the community has shrunk massively to just a few active servers at most times. That is, unless you look at the Mega Server, which apparently has over 8,000 people online. Bots. Many of you warned me about this server, and although I didn't test it myself, you're apparently prone to malware and even having hacks activated for you if you log onto their server. I couldn't find any proof of this past some rumours and urban legends about malware once being on there, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. 8,000 players? That's the mega server. That's the suspect server, I think. TWI does not recommend playing on mega servers. They contain cheats and viruses. It's not often you see stuff like that in... To start, I... Jeez. But I felt I needed a quieter server to learn the game, so I tried a server with less than 20 other fellas. Marksman? Yes. Marksman might be my... my role on this game. I joined their Discord, and it seems they've been struggling with donations again recently. Or at least, in 2023 they were. I'd be very interested to see how they're doing nowadays, almost a year later. There was a guy right in front of me, by the way. And I think he's just killed a teammate of mine. Yep, there he is. Look at this. Look at this. This little rat. What? And the bots have turned and turned on their 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 aimbot and hit you. Okay. No thanks. Why well, don't I just sit in chat? Rest in peace, Jeff. H H brother. Every so often the server would post a message in chat talking about the map rotation, donations, or in this case, a tribute to someone they called Jeff. I instantly wanted to know more, so I decided to get into contact with the owner of the server. I added Bromley through the server's discord and asked him who Jeff was to this community. So Jeff was one of the guys that helped me advertise and launch the server back in 2019. Sad to say, but he committed in 2021. He was a very well respected and thought of member of the server, and we miss him dearly. The message is a tribute to him, and the HH brother refers to Hulk Hogan, as Jeff loved Hulk Hogan and would often he say- He answered it! He answered it! Shout out to Bromley, that's great content for the stream. HH brother, which is Hulk Hogan's HH brother. way of signing off tweets. Fuck yeah, Hulk Hogan for the win, or whatever. Damn. You know, I don't know. Later that about day in the people. Discord, I saw people actually talking about Jeff, and one person just finding out in the moment that he had actually passed away. And as it turns out, Jeff was just 16 years old. His entire YouTube channel is full of iconic Rising Storm 2 videos. And the last video he ever uploaded to his channel was some absolutely beautiful flamethrower clips in March of 2020. <laughs> Wow. I took a while to explore Jeff's legacy and ask Bromley more questions, but eventually returned when the game ended. To start the new map, I stuck by a guy called Platy, because he was doing by far the best out of all of us. Wait, you can get roll kicked for poor roll performance? Well, I am absolutely finished. Oh, play, but Platy, get out of there, bro. Get out of there. Oh, shit. This doesn't seem like the greatest idea. Only a few. Gonna go get another beer. Oh my god. These crappy old shooters. You couldn't pay me.
think I actually killed him. I might die, but I did. I maybe killed him. Wait, look at this water nope. on the AK when you're in water. I then later Ow. discovered that even when crouched, you can pretty much sprint at full speed. But you can run while crouched. That is. <gasps> Ow, my heart. So I just... Holy shit. There's a guy outside. Motherfucker, there is a guy very close. Motherfucker. Dude, this angle... No. Wow, I'm not rated. It's a miracle. Brother, no. That house got me 90% of my kills for the entire game. And after our little strat was found out, we all got pushed back to our final territory, where we eventually lost the game. Very unsettling to have an RPG next to your head. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. We tried our best. My third match was on a beachside map, and instead of there being less than 20 people online, the server was slowly starting to fill up, which meant things were going to get harder. I'm pretty sure that was two grenades. One in front of me, and then I turned around to run away, and there was another one. The problem I was having with grenades was that they explode much quicker than they do in most other games. So once you hear that tick, you have about a third of a second before your legs are gone. And if I didn't get blown up, I got killed by a player I couldn't see. Oh, is he dead? No, oh, no, he's not. There's a guy in that bush over there. He's gonna kill me. I... I don't know why I stayed there. We got a minute left. Wait, do we win if that minute runs out? We were obviously gradually losing this game, but if we managed to hold on to our last territory for the remaining minute, we'd actually win the game. We have been defeated. Oh, we lost. This loss now meant every game I played today, I ended up on the losing side. After recovering from the loss, I got in contact with the server owners of both servers I played today, Phantom Rebels and Hardcore Gaming. Mad Max, who owns Phantom Rebels, has over 5,000 hours in the game. He runs numerous servers, communicates directly with the community managers, and in the past, developers, and has even met someone from the community in real life for lunch. He told me that he spoke briefly with the community managers recently, and they're looking at possibly reducing the price of the game. But at this time, nothing is confirmed. Obviously, maintaining a server for a game like this with zero developer support is incredibly challenging both technically and also monetarily. So I decided I was going to fill out his donation goal of 90 pounds for the month of June. As for Phantom Rebels, Bromley told me they're often short around 10 to 15 dollars each month. So I decided to donate 100 dollars to them as well in the hopes that they don't have to take money out of their own pocket for a while. I met quite a few people in these discords and everyone was nothing but kind. And I'll link the discords to both servers below so you can meet the community yourself. A few days later, a community member by the name of TS2 even took time out of his day to talk to me about all the custom maps that dominate the servers of Rising Storm now that the developers are inactive. There were four custom maps that made it to official servers. Dong Ha, Mekong, Apache Snow and Demilitarized Zone. And even today there are more and more maps still being published to the Steam Workshop. So while the numbers might be in decline, I don't think this core community is going anywhere. Wow. While looking through lists of the worst reviewed Steam games of all time, I found a little survival game about a fella called Gary and his incident. To play this game you have to buy it off external websites because at some point about 6 years ago it was finally taken off of Steam. This marked the end of a pretty long and drawn out storyline which began with the developers Wild Game Studio copyright striking a video of their game made by the legend Total Biscuit. This is a full release. This is a full release. It is not early access. This is not a beta, guys. Seriously, I am not lying to you. And this is after about three patches. This game is a f***ing 
disaster. The weird part <laughs> was that, was that Total Biscuit was personally sent a review code to review the game. But when the review was actually honest about the state of the game, things went sour. The idea that you could use copyright law as a spear to attack those who are criticizing you as an affront to free speech and freedom of the press. It's horrendously anti-consumer. It's unquestionably censorship. They even doubled down on this copyright strike and said the reason they copyright struck it was because he had monetization on. And to be able to do that, he should have obtained authorization. Obviously, this went down like a sack of shit but in turn gave the game a lot of popularity, regardless of whether it was almost entirely negative. Eventually, Kotaku got a comment from a representative of Wild Game Studio, and they said this, After seeing all the negative impact today, we decided to withdraw our complaint to YouTube. After this, the video returned to normal and things slowly fizzled out, but to this day, no one has heard from Wild Game Studio since. And although their website is still up, there have been zero activity, and both of their games on Steam are now delisted. Of course, I tried it myself, and it was exactly what I expected after watching those videos. The survival mode was interesting, and revolved around this open jungle world with clunky animations and pretty tame survival mechanics. But I have definitely seen worse. This is a very weird options menu. If it, it like, has this animation, and it makes you feel like it's broken because the border just stays there. Okay, it's running at about 5 FPS. Sounds about right. Actually, maybe 20. Can we pick this fella up? Power feathers. We just stripped him. The story mode wasn't exactly incredible either. Is it this? There we go. This screen shake is making me nauseous. Oh, okay. Did I just run into a spear that came out the wall? Alright. Oh, <laughs> why does he run like that? I have a feeling the game has crashed. It crashed. Dude, did I just lose my progress? But the game itself stopped me from exploring the story mode deeper because it crashed for a second time about halfway through. And wouldn't stop crashing after that. The large majority of the time, asset flip games don't get as much attention as day one did. But they do usually suffer the same fate, and that's a very short lifespan. Either way, I think it's safe to say that Total Biscuit won this war. I found Aces High 3 by complete accident on the Steam Store. Ace it turns Society out that this 3. thing is a pretty well-known flight sim game, first launched by Hitech in 2000. And still today, I found over 30 players in a server. This was a flight sim though, and that's something I'm completely unfamiliar with. So to get a bit of confidence, I spent half an hour by myself in a single player lobby getting to grips with the controls. Here we go. I'm drifting to the left a little bit and I can't actually hear anything. Oh. oh, oh, this is part of the plan, it's all part of the plan, come on, we're just gonna mount. However, once I got a couple takeoffs and successful landings, I instantly moved over to the only official server to play as a fighter jet. Stay central, stay central, stay central, stay central. Here we go, how hard can it be? Oh boy, oh boy, there we go, there we go. Easy, that's not too bad. So what I think I'm gonna do is navigate to the right here. Because I see a lot of people on the map. G. Um. Bam, bitch. I died at least five times within the first few minutes, and then floated in the air flying the completely wrong direction without realizing it, which was when someone in chat took notice of me. He said, Raya, you knew. <laughs> how did? How could he tell? Blenheim seems like a very nice fella. Oh, I see a runway. There we go. Okay. Can't believe I've been playing this game for an hour and I've not shot a single bullet at somebody else. Oh shit, wait. Am I allowed to land? Wait, you know what? I overshoot, I overshoot, I overshoot. Oh, he's taking off. Wow, that could have been bad. Wow. Wow. 
Blenheim told me he had been playing the game for over 22 years and was currently on a laptop without years. a joystick, meaning he was playing keyboard and mouse just like me, except on about 8 FPS. He taught me all sorts of things like the most popular tanks and jeeps and how to actually talk to others in chat. Hello, Rye, I see you made it to 200. Guys, Rye is a new player. <laughs> Oh, I love this guy, man. Now everybody's Even welcoming Even the dead games, me. there's somebody left. You just don't get this anywhere else. Welcome. Not an easy game. Stick with it. Yeah, I'm... I'm figuring that one out pretty quickly. I'm probably about to be shot down here in a second. In about two seconds. I give it three, maybe. Yep. <clears throat> this whole time, I was still in a fighter jet, though and Blenheim suggested I try out a bomber since they're easier on mouse and keyboard. So I had a go at taking off inside a B-24, and then Blenheim himself invited me to join him in his B-17. Right, okay, wow, just to let you know, AH is hard to fly fighters without a joystick. Much better in bombers and tanks. So I'm mostly in bombers, which is much easier without joystick. I'll be getting a joystick and gaming PC in some weeks. Oh, that's cool. Okay. This is... Right, you can jump into my B-17 now if you want to. Yes, 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 please. How do I do that? Oh my god. <laughs> Your job is to have fun. You are a gunner from any position. Our goal in the bombers was to make our way over to the other team's bases or towns and drop some bombs, while my individual job was to gun down the fighter jets trying to take us down before we get anywhere. I don't think there's been a single moment tonight where I've understood what I'm doing. And that is the beauty of these games. Oh. Oh. Okay, well I think we bombed something. <laughs> We're also being attacked. We might be finished. We might be finished. I thought he was going to blame me, but I don't yeah, think he gives a shit. Attacking. No problem, sure was fun. So now you're learning. You've got a thousand more steps to go. Hop in again if you want, I'm taking off, okay. Let's have another go. Where is his actual plane? I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Oh. Oh. I think he's gone. I think he's gone. He said, good kill. There we go. There we go. I, I don't know if I actually did anything there, but... Oh, shit, he's still alive. <clears throat> Blenheim was genuinely the most patient person I think I've ever met. And after a few more attempts at being a gunner, he told me I should try flying the bomber myself while he took up the gunner role, which made me nervous. Okay, you are starting to understand bombers. You can't reload guns, so when I have an extra person on board like you, and we are both shooting bad guys, then guns will run out fast. Ah. How about you fly a bomber now, and I will join you. This, is, this will be absolutely terrible. Well, let's try this. If you make mistakes, don't worry. All part of the learning process. Yep. <coughs> okay. All right, no, I, I agree, I agree. All part of the process. Wait, this is actually going a lot better than it did last time. <laughs> Look at him go. G key to bring the gears up. Yep, I forgot about that. Right, check, check, check. Oh, B, okay, well, he, I think he said that a little bit too late. <laughs> I didn't realize it was B. Oh boy. Okay, oh wait, we've still got one alive. It was fine, but then I didn't realize what key it was to actually drop the bombs. But you know what? B was pretty obvious. I probably could have worked that one out in hindsight. Round two, baby. Please don't blow me up. No. <laughs> that was so good. You are doing very well for a new pilot. Keep it up. This guy, man. He's so kind. I literally met this guy like an hour and a half ago. And he's playing on 8 FPS for me. 
This game is amazing. So many aspects to it, and the fun is unlimited. In hindsight, things actually went pretty well. We did a couple more runs in this bomber, and after almost three hours, Blenheim had to go. This guy's in chat asking people to help me. I mean, I have to go, but he's just so nice. Right, come back again and ask for some help again. You know what? I think I might. If you're watching this, Blenheim, thank you for helping me. You're an absolute legend, and I can't get over how nice everyone was. I heard loads of things about the toxicity of this community and how many left the game in the early days because of how competitive it can get. Yet there were countless people in chat welcoming me and giving me tips for no reason at all, but to make a new player feel welcomed. I remember seeing the 56% positive review score on Steam before I ever played it, and I thought that was a bit harsh. But I did only find out after playing the game that it actually has a $15 a month subscription. Wow. I paid without paying because of the free trial everyone gets. But after oh. two weeks, it'll lock you out of online arenas and ask you to either wow. subscribe or limit yourself to That's offline That's an play. MMORPG. I think something like that would be fair if the game received constant updates and content. Yeah, it was, but at it the was moment, like a subscription good. like that just can't be justified by most people. No. Yep, he was honest about it. Dystopia from 2005. Ooh, Dystopia is a cyberpunk based oh, FPS no. built by Pino Human Development Team on the iconic Source engine. Oh. So alongside B Hopping, Dystopia holds a lot of the same characteristics as a number of older games like Neo Tokyo, Fortress Forever, and others. But out of all of them, Dystopia probably has the lowest player count. And for the majority of every day, that number is zero. I found a Discord called Dystopia Get Drafted where the small community keeping this game alive hosts games of 5 to 10 people twice a week. But outside of those hours, all the lobbies are completely empty. I knew this would be the perfect opportunity to play with you lot in my Discord. So we set up a time of 8pm, and you guys did not disappoint. Good. How is everybody? Right, we good? <laughs> Pretty happy there's people here. <laughs> good. Hopefully we can get a full lobby. I think it's already pretty close. Yeah. The lobby was made up of roughly 10% regulars who play this game every week, and then 90% of people from my Discord who had never touched it before. We cycled through map to map trying out different classes, while I tried my best to get this cyberspace perk to work. I gave a go at finding the computer you're meant to use to travel to the cyberspace, but I got distracted with almost everything else, so the closest I got was watching other people. To switch to a map, you have to call a vote like in most Source games. But with 32 people, you had to get a minimum of 16 people voting yes. Which we were actually surprisingly coordinated about. Okay, well... Page up, yeah, fellas. Yeah, Click yeah. page up on your keyboard. I'll borrow. I'm at page up. Your eyes. Yeah. Thank you. Right what the? Do you guys host public games on your Discord too, or is it all like competitive? Public games are generally Saturday evening Euro time and Wednesday evening America time. Well, there you go. If you want to play with these guys, I'll link the Discord below and you, you can uh, join in. They're some of the nicest fellas I've ever seen. Wow, oh my god, them. I'm so good. Just give me this corner, I don't think I should move. I'll link their Discord below, so in case you're interested, you can join them in their weekly pub games. This vote was to change the game mode to something called Fistball, and it's honestly pretty self-explanatory what that game mode was about. If you want to play Fistball, I'll page up. Don't page up, it's... It'll be good for a video. <laughs> That's it's true. A good for video. I feel like it would yeah. be terribly good. Well, I'm convinced. This is terrible. Like, this is actually as terrible as they said it was. kill each other with it. <laughs> <laughs> you did! <laughs> Why? This is basically soccer. <laughs> There's 40 people standing in Bellas. a circle hitting a ball. I'm, I'm stuck. G guys, let the ball out. Never keep it in the corner! This poor f***ing ball, man. Pay job. Hey job. Page down, page down. Hey job. Hey job. Oh, thank God. 
After two hours, we still had an entirely full lobby. And although the regulars were still wiping us clean, some of us were actually starting to understand the mechanics of the game more. So we've still got a full lobby, and we've been here for like an hour and 40 minutes. Oh shit. I'm sorry, buddy. Wait, so how do you... Whoops, sorry. Oh, okay, so you, you spawn something, and then you swing it around the corner. Let me try this. As you can see. How do I not kill him? I'll tower the cool map. Hey, How do I not kill him? Switching maps every 10 minutes had us speaking about who actually created them. And it turns out Prox and a few others online were map developers themselves. Uh, mappers still develop maps for this game. I can't believe it. Wait, really? Yeah, I map for this game as well as Koki and a few others. The community for Dystopia might be small, but these Source games tend to harbor an unusually loyal cult following of I people from I remember Natural Selection. So even if lobbies yeah. are empty, maps are still being Natural made. Selection was Not good. Not only that, but the community for Dystopia hosts their own tournaments each year. And this year's tournament has started just two days ago and will run throughout the entire month of June. The community is hosting it on their Discord and streaming all the games to the Get Drafted YouTube channel, which I'll also link in the description. I spoke to someone called Fairy who's organizing the majority of this year's tournament and they told me last year's pot was $250. $50 for each team member that won. This year's tournament has moved to 6v6 and so I decided to donate $300 to whichever team wins as these competitions are even more important to smaller communities like these. I think it's safe to say we had a lot of fun visiting Dystopia and meeting the community behind this game. Oh, there's a turret. Okay. It wasn't by my own volition. I got the mate kit to save us. Oh, mate! The spiders! Oh, you are a oh. They explode! This is so oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> <laughs> Polish, man! That's such a Cortex moment. I could be here for days talking about all the mechanics and niche details of Dystopia, and I didn't even have time to try half the classes especially after I got pretty comfortable with everything in the medium class, but almost everything has a place in the game, and it's surprisingly well balanced. Make sure to be respectful if you do decide to give the legends over in the dystopia community a visit. And again, the pub games are hosted every Wednesday at an American friendly time, and Saturday for the Europeans. Shadowrun. I heard a lot of talk about Shadowrun 2007 over the past half a year, but until now, I'd never actually put in effort to figure out what it was. I remember vividly seeing it, or at least hearing of it back in the Xbox 360 days, as that's where it originated from. The early 2000s were a prime time for FPS games, spearheaded by the likes of Valve, games from Activision, and tons of smaller shooters set in various time periods. And in 2007, a game called Shadowrun took center stage as a combination of early Counter-Strike and the RPG game also called Shadowrun. Ooh, but it didn't Hammer. take long for both the game to be considered a flop and the closing of Vasa Studios, the people behind the creation of the game. It still survives on Xbox 360 till this day, and you can usually find a few people from the official Shadowrun Discord hosting pub games and competitive ranked matches late at night, with up to 5 to 10 people. But with a program called Games for Windows Live, I was able to download the game on PC. I queued for a game at about 6pm, but after half an hour no one else had queued up, so I asked some people in the Discord where I found a few guys who also wanted to play. So we organised to meet at 1am my time, which was not ideal. Oh, oh my god, it's real people. It's actually real people. Okay, if X is reload, I guess I'm playing with a controller. I have a feeling this is not gonna go well. I got two oh. laptops. 200 scrap. <clears throat> I got on a bit early, but 20 minutes in, we had four people in the lobby, and I was having to learn the game on the fly. For the most part, things are pretty similar to any regular shooter, but there are magic abilities you can purchase and retain throughout the match, as well as some other effects like reviving a teammate or a healing tree. I really wish there was like a, a chat, but it's an Xbox game, so <laughs> that sort of thing doesn't exist. I think they're in like a Discord. I feel so like that. But I literally have zero way of saying anything. <laughs> How have I got the most kills in my team? 
Maybe I'm actually doing pretty good. <laughs> oh no. Yep, kind of thought that was coming. Oh, you legend. There were a lot of controls that took me a good while to learn. And even now, I still don't know how to pick an item up. I think the only time I've ever played a FPS game with controller was Call of Duty. That's a teammate. Call of Duty Ghosts. How the f*** do you pick it up? What, what happened to games telling you how to... Oh. This game isn't for me. It really feels like a fever dream. It's like a game that I feel like I've played, but I mean, you can tell I haven't. So this is how you win. I think I gave it a good shot, but sometimes you just have to accept that these people actually know what they're doing. What the f*** is that? He just deflected my bullets. <laughs> Holy shit, this is a 6v6. Sniper oh, rifle. No, and this wait. time I'm going to use it, it properly. Why did you put it on display capture? Oh no, there. I get to f watch my lifeless body flail around. Almost every night since that day, there's been people in the Shadowrun Discord organizing public lobbies on PC, which I never saw before. I was incredibly impressed with the community behind Shadowrun, especially given how it was publicly received back when it first released, and even today the review score isn't great. But they handle themselves really well, and they're even hosting a LAN in Florida sometime next year. I'm really glad I took the time to look more into Shadowrun, because even though I was awful, the game itself, and especially the community, are incredible. If you want to try it yourself, there is a way to play with keyboard, and in order to install it on your PC, you need to buy a cheap key for a different game, and then use that to activate the Shadowrun client. It sounds complicated, but it took me about 5 minutes, and the instructions are all in the Discord. Over the last year, I've fallen in love with war games like Hell Let Loose, Squad 44, and Valve's classic Day of Defeat. But there's one I've never played before, and that's the predecessor to Red Orchestra 2, Red Orchestra OST Front, one of the earliest war games released in 2006. If you're familiar with RO2, this is basically a less flushed out version, with a lot less players. And if you've never played either, this is a World War II simulator set in Russia with the main game mode being Team Deathmatch. That's two people. Zooming in down Ironside takes quite a long time. At 6pm I found two players online, but when I returned a couple hours later there were now five online, and it didn't take long before they realised I was new. A new player here, maybe you changed the nickname, but I don't remember him right. Sorry, hello. Alright. How we doing? I'm a doing. For some reason, the map switched abruptly from the bridge to this more open Dust 2 esque map. And then Swiss Guard and Ivan started talking about someone who got banned. Well, I asked me to take him in again, so that only, that's the only reason that he did. Why did he want him back? He's such a hack. Well, I want to write you, but I had not, I, I had not so much time. What was I this? He killed you. me for some I reason. I said to Brad, we will take him in again, but uh, I will take a program of my friend again. One the time, and then if you have again such values that expect the cheating, then you will out further. That's fair enough. I don't care either way. We don't have a lot of players anyway, so... That's kind of sad, but... Yeah, the second chance, you can do with them what, what, you, what you want. Of course, I will not say when I let run the program, I let run the program uh, the same way you would be like this before. Then he is out for that. Because cheating is not for me. Obviously, it's none of my business, whoever they unban or punish. 
But cheating in a game as small as this is honestly a perplexing thing. I use this first proper game to get used to all the mechanics. Oh, but I mean, like, they're, they're small penis douchebags who really need to prove to even the darkest, smallest little dregs of the internet that they're losers. And I wouldn't put it past them. They really need to show the world how much of a loser they are. You know? I, I, I really would not put it past them. You know? I think you're betting f on their decency. I think that's a mistake. When to not push into a building. Why? What's on the server before? I don't remember you. Sorry. No, you're good. This is my first time ever. Just checking out the game. Oh shit, I didn't see the grenade. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> that is so unlucky. You killed me, I killed you. At least you got him though. <laughs> It's weird how much men need to shoot guns at each other. It's like really pretty strong. It's like a really strong desire in humanity. It's it's up there with sex. So I want to make sure I didn't get ra raided day one because I kind of expected it. Okay, this is going great. Hard switching between games. Sorry, stand up. Sit up on me. I love hard switching between games on the fly. Pretty fun. <laughs> I really got to turn my sensitivity down. It is. Oh. Did we win? We're a winner chicken dinner. You know what? I'll say I'll, I contributed. When you like pizza as much as me, you gotta be the pizza man. So <laughs> simple. The second game got off to a rough start for me personally, and no matter where I went, I somehow got myself killed. Oh god. Here they come. Cut that part out. See, actually, it this got is boring. I'm just a white bread. Ah! 
<laughs> what could a man with money, a wife, and five kids possibly want more in life? Apparently, hard drugs. Description. Description. Act of a... Dude, why would you write a statement that's so hard to read? And fighting with internet strangers. I don't trust any of you, and I hope all of you catch gonorrhea from that white face paint you put on. You disgust me. This is how Nick Lakeda went from internet lawyer to criminal lawyer. I'm done. I'm done with life. Long before Nick ever had aspirations to become a lawyer, he went to Southwest Minnesota State University to get a degree in literature and creative writing. It was during this period, in his early 20s, that he met Kayla, his future wife, who was attending the same university. Though they've remained remarkably private about their kids and kept pictures of them squarely out of the internet, probably wise given the state of things, we do know that Kayla became a stay-at-home mom in 2007, soon after they had their first child. The pregnancy and having to pay the bills are probably what made Nick take up work in customer service for Wells Fargo, around the same time. Fortunately for him, he only had to stay there for a little over a year as he managed to get a much more prestigious job as a brokerage representative at Thrivent Financial for Lutherans, an organization that provided services like life insurance and retirement planning, and at the time, employed only Lutheran Christians, indicating that this was Nick's religion. For three years, Nick had a life many people would kill to have. He was in his mid-twenties, he had a wife, a kid, and presumably another kid on the way, and a good-paying job in a charitable Christian organization. But even then, he had the ambition to do more, and in early 2010, he stopped working for Thrivent, and, based solely on what's on his LinkedIn page, spent the rest of the year without a job and enrolled in a law school the year after, followed by another four years without formal employment. I can't say for sure how he afforded to do this. There could have been unemployment payments involved, at least early on, but it's hard to believe that they lasted for a total of half a decade in a household with five or six people, not only having to pay bills, but also pay for law school. On the surface, it's a mystery how Nick stayed unemployed for that long, but it's been speculated that him being able to do this is directly involved with the passing of his grandfather, a veteran from the Korean War who happened to pass away just half a year prior to his enrollment. While there are no documents proving the inheritance, we do know that he had some degree of proximity with his grandfather, since Nick grew up in his grandfather's hometown of Houston. And here's how we know this fun fact. I'm just a dumb motherfucking uh, who's never heard of the streets. I've never, I don't know sh about the streets, right? I don't know where <laughs> you grew up, but where I grew up was the number one. Where did you grow up, bitch? You're straight bitch, mate. What the fuck are you talking crime about? Crime neighborhood in Houston, Texas. Houston, shut the fuck up. This is in the 80s. People got shot. Ooh, in the 80s. Yeah, in the 80s. Every day. Later on, there's another grandfather inheritance theory that's much more substantiated, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. By 2015, he got his diploma and opened a business, Ricada Law, leasing out an office and everything. At this point, despite having long left Thriven, it seemed Nick was still very much a conservative Hoopy religious atheist. person, atheist. as remnants of his now deleted his name is Hoopy Atheist. Did activity on Twitter show him arguing with people about atheism, which at the time was very much in vogue as far as internet controversial topics went. Further bolstering his conservative personality were the posts he made online, occasionally tackling contentious subjects like the Black Lives Matter riots, but nothing too risque or radical. However, by late 2017, those same dead footprints of Twitter activity show that Nick was beginning to engage with the seedy underbelly of alternative internet personalities. Namely, he participated in discussions regarding the brewing conflict between Dick Masterson from The Dick Show and his former associate, Maddox. This conflict erupted into a lawsuit, dubbed the LOL suit by many, due to how incompetently the suit was put together. Together. I'm no law buff, but from what I can glean, Maddox was asking for $20 million while citing Kiwi Farms posts as evidence of the damages Dick supposedly caused him. Regardless of the suit's merits, or lack thereof, Nick, who was already interested in this niche culture, saw this drama becoming litigious as an opportunity for him to further become a part of this community, and so he did. In November 2017, he began posting a series of videos in which he carefully reviewed the files and gave his legal opinion on them. You all by now have probably read this, but I'm going to go through and give you my learned legal opinion which uh, is pretentious and everything so I'm gonna do that with uh, this bottle of Balmore uh, scotch which is fantastic and uh, 
we're gonna see how this goes so just uh, bear with me it's very fitting that the first video which indirectly led to his current situation has Nick opening a bottle of scotch in the first 30 seconds many more episodes of Nick's review of the lol suit ensued and by January 2018 he had achieved his objective of becoming recognized in this little corner of the internet as Dick invited him to take part in one of the episodes of the Dick show possibly due to the advice he had been receiving from people who were following his uploads he began live streaming his lawsuit reviews on YouTube since they were all unedited anyway while Nick gained reputation with Dick and his cohorts, he made himself an enemy of Maddox, who eventually went on something of a campaign to label Nick as the blackface lawyer. While I refrain from commenting on the implications this may have, Nick, along with his non-Yakubian counterpart, Drexel, directly addressed the origins of this picture. Context is, Halloween, it's at my house, we have about a group of very close friends, yep. maybe, maybe five, so, six yeah, people. 2005, I came to visit, and everyone, all of our friends get together, and then at that point, you're like, look, and then here it is. Nick and blackface, and it's hilarious because he's going as me. I had borrowed your headband. You borrowed the headband, and you, you're rocking the afro that I was rocking at that time. Yeah. And someone it, actually said that's not the same guy. He's bald. <laughs> <laughs> In spite of whatever one's opinion may be on blackface, it's clear from the context that it wasn't done in a mean-spirited fashion, and if anything, emboldened Nick's reputation with the crowd he'd been mingling with, who saw it as proof that, despite being a lawyer, he had a sense of humor. Fortunately for him, despite his strong association with this crowd, he wasn't at all limited to making content that catered to them. As a matter of fact, he made content on pretty much any litigation-related topic he could get his hands on, and every once in a while, it drew in a new crowd of people. Part of why his streams were appealing to people, in spite of how boring the average person would find listening to someone translate legalese for hours on end, his analysis was so charming and easy for a layman to understand that people actually wanted to give him money through Super Chats to support his streams. The first significant bout of traction Nick was involved in was the case of sexual harassment accusations surrounding Vic McNogna. In early 2019, Vic, a voice actor who often appeared in anime dubs, had a series of accusations levied against him, which caused him to lose job opportunities and convention appearances. Uh -oh. In response, he filed a defamation suit against his employer, Funim Star Trek Discovery. Uh oh nation, as well as other voice actors, and Nick organized a GoFundMe page for Vic's case. Well, not exactly. The actual beneficiary of the page was an attorney called Ty Beard, a personal acquaintance of Nick's who founded and managed a private equity firm and dealt primarily with mergers and acquisitions, not defamation lawsuits. Again, I'm in no way a legal expert, but if you're going to conduct a lawsuit, especially one that was as high profile as this was set out to be, you better get someone on it who is specialized on that kind of lawsuit, not a random attorney. The the thing is, Ty was anything but random to Nick. But in order to really explain the relationship, I'll have to take a step back and make a significant detour here to tell you about a man named Lewis Walter Owen. Lewis was the founder and eventually president of a company called Petrofac, an international company worth hundreds of millions. Based on one extremely autistic, in a good way, KF users' analysis of stock exchange data, Lewis's shares of Petrofac were worth anywhere from 132 to 194 million dollars, and that's after he donated 3.2 2 million of his shares to charity. From $110,000 donated to a university to around $800,000 donated through the Owen Family Foundation each year, totaling around $40 million as of 2011, meaning it's probably way more now. Lewis and his wife were very Catholic and donated a whopping $18 million to build a hospital that still carries their name to this day. And these are just a few of their charitable acts. Basically, they were the real-life Martha and Thomas Wayne, true philanthropists who spent their life trying to give as much money as they could to help their neighbor. So why is any of this relevant? Well, the person appointed as secretary and treasurer of the Owen Family Foundation was Lewis's daughter, Celeste, Nick Ricada's mother. Lewis Owen passed away in 2018, followed by his wife just a year later, but he left behind a will, leaving his inheritance to his children. The executor of this will, who signed his name on the document, was none other than Ty Beard. Oh yeah, it's, it's all coming together. together. You see, Nick has a history of claiming that he grew up in the worst neighborhood of Houston, Texas, and truly knew the streets as the OG white bread N-word. Additionally, he's claimed that his family's ability to afford all of their kids and homeschool them has nothing to do with having money, because according to him, they were already doing it when they were flat broke and unemployed before he went to law school. This means he's necessarily talking about the time period prior to 2011 when he began law school. But there's a little issue with that. In comments sourced from a Rumble stream of his from October 2022, 
industry, he bought a house for $269,000 in 2009, two years before law school. Wasn't he supposed to be dead broke and raising two kids at this point? But that's just the tip of this iceberg. In November 2018, around the same time Lewis passed, Nick bought a house for $650,000. And by the time the Vic lawsuit began, early 2019, he claimed he wasn't making any mortgage payments, suggesting the house had already been paid for. All of this information can be verified by checking publicly available information about him. Although I can't put it here since it would technically constitute a dox. His streaming was doing very well, sure, and being a lawyer does pay well. But he does live in a rural area and probably doesn't have that many clients, especially considering his office never expanded or moved to a larger location. Based on what's available, there was never a stream of income that easily explained the purchase of either of his houses or him paying for law school. Of course, this is all speculation, and he is publicly denied getting any significant amount of money from his grandparents. However, it's really hard to believe or understand how he could afford his lifestyle. But let's get back on track. Vic's GoFundMe raised almost $300,000, all of which went to waste since the suit failed catastrophically. Nick, on the other hand, was doing fine and dandy and went by completely unscathed. Moving on to cover the Rittenhouse trial, which gave his online presence another boom in popularity, with over 100,000 live viewers at one point. His growth got to the point that the corporation responsible for streaming the trial footage he was reacting to sent him a cease and desist, essentially accusing him of copyright violation for restreaming their stuff, despite there obviously being a significant amount of commentary over it. Many things can be said about Nick Ricada, but he was one of, if not the most successful content creator in his genre. Nick Ricada was long established at this point, but the Rittenhouse trial really sent him up in an unforeseen way as far as his YouTube popularity. And fortunately, at this point, while his alcohol consumption was still present and often featured throughout the entire streams, the most it ever led to was Nick sounding a bit tipsy. Soon after the Rittenhouse boom <laughs> came another one. The Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp trial, one of the most discussed trials in recent years and Nick's biggest claim to fame. His series covering the trial has 24 episodes, with most episodes running for well over 8 hours, the very last episode having over 1 million views and a whopping 10 hours of video length. Just imagining the kind of obscene money this guy was making off of AdSense makes me sick, meaning, uh, please give it all to me. If he wasn't already rolling in it at this point, he absolutely was now. The insane amount of traction his channel was getting began drawing the ire of other law tubers, but nothing to write home about, considering his viewership and relevance far superseded anything they could say about him. However, things began getting serious when Nick commented on Alex Jones's trial regarding his statements about Sandy Hook, in which Nick said, sometimes it feels like freedom of speech is dead. Right around the same time, one of his Amber Heard videos got copyright striked by NBC, and when he disputed it, he wrote the following message. NBC is a pile of human garbage. In fact, they use money and power to suppress the voices of the people they attempt to brainwash and spoon-feed their regurgitated bullsh** on a daily basis. I imagine NBC's lawyers are actually reading this material and over real legal work. Just wishing they were involved like the cucks they are. No one watching my content would ever actually watch the NBC video in virgin form because NBC is a lying heap. My content adds the necessary expertise and background information for people to return an informed opinion on the matter presented rather than be spoon-fed at juice from a bunch of communists. While the dispute did clear him of the copyright strike, he wasn't safe for long, as not long after, he received a terms of service strike for showing blood, which is more serious and will get you banned far more reliably than copyright. And as a result, he was suspended. A while later, while discussing the Kiwi Farms versus Keppel's debacle, he got himself in hot water once again when, in a heated gamer moment, he suggested people like Keppels in the context of distributing HRT for minors should face the wall. I'm not saying he's wrong to criticize these people, but this was recontextualized as a death threat against trans people. And as a result, he got another suspension in terms of serp. Hey guys, and welcome back to the light attack stagger. Parries will usually negate the damage of focus attacks and force the opponent to drop their weapon. Pressing L and B after you land a successful parry will initiate a counterattack where the enemy will be forced to take an extremely powerful hit. Balancing out these three basics of Naraka's combat will lead you to having more consistent, successful fights, and honing these will allow you to grow into a higher tier player. Picking the right hero for you and Naraka can be quite challenging. As of this video, we currently have 11 heroes with 3 skills and ultimates each. This means a wide variety of playstyles and uses. I'll briefly explain what each hero generally does and how they are commonly played. This does not mean that there are no other ways to play them, so make sure to try them out and experiment with who you like. I don't think this game's good. I'm sorry. Elder Ring picked up a bit. Elder Rings, yeah, people are starting to, to come back to it a little bit. 
Elden Ring could be fun. Purpose strike, meaning his channel was now hanging by a thread, and his future live streaming on YouTube was increasingly unsteady. The stress he was under made his problem with alcohol even more intense than before, and now, there were large portions of some of his streams in which he was audibly drunk, saying the kind of things that get you banned real fast. You wanna take it from me? You better meet a f***ing Eventually, he did get kicked off a platform for a third TOS strike that was supposedly due to Nick doxing people, but in reality was the result of a mass flagging campaign conducted by Keppel's followers. This event was covered by journalists who, recognizing Rakeda's importance on the platform as pretty much the originator of the genre of law-related YouTube content, highlighted the injustice of YouTube allowing this mass flagging campaign to succeed, and lamented the possibility that Nick could even get disbarred for the death threat allegations. Even if that didn't happen, Nick hadn't been practicing law as he was dedicating all of his time to the channel, which in 2021 pulled in over $700,000 in revenue, which is crazy for content that's completely unedited. Soon after this ban, he took up streaming on Rumble, where he was still pulling in live viewership at the tens of thousands. Fortunately for him, his ban from YouTube was lifted, and he returned in October 2022. Because of his brush up against trans activism and censorship, his reputation as a sort of conservative figure became even stronger than it already was. Oh, how little they knew. As early as July, there were signs that something strange was afoot beginning with Nick having pictures taken of him getting stepped on by girls in cosplay at the Anime Matsuri convention. Granted, his wife was already there, and this could easily be a simple joke, but it showed a side of Nick that people weren't familiar with. At the time, the most this could be interpreted as was that, despite being a family man, he comfortably engaged with less than PG or edgy concepts. However, with time, it was becoming clear that he was a little too comfortable. The person he had managing his Discord server, for example, regularly posted extreme hentai to his main Twitter account that would whiten the hair of even the most most powerful gooner. This tipped people off that just maybe there was some activity going on in his server that wasn't so appropriate, and that suspicion was more than proven correct. Before I get into what was going on in the Discord, I have to give context by explaining what Nick and his wife were doing on the platform Locals. I can't really sugarcoat this. Pictures had surfaced of Nick Riketa gripping a bottle with his butt cheeks. Likewise, pictures had surfaced of his wife doing that same thing, along with other lewd images of her. All of these made their way to Nick's Discord server, partly because they were relevant to the fact that they were pics of Nick and his wife, but also because the server had an entire chat dedicated solely to not safe for work pictures, something that flew in the face of the conservative image many people had of him. When people brought this up to Nick as if it were an issue, he flippantly dismissed them as if this wasn't totally incongruent with the rest of his online persona. One user said, listen, your wife posts pics of her booty online for strangers. This is the response bound to happen, so you're either in one of these positions. One, you don't care, but you still sh talk cucks and make fun of men for not having loyal wives. Two, you do care, and you are a cuck who wanted her to post her act and get off on it. Or, three, you were overpowered by her macho strength, and she is the alpha. It just makes you look like a hypocrite. I think Nick may be going the iDubs route. This was something of a game changer since all of the people in this Discord were paid subscribers of his, meaning even his close following wasn't cool with what was going on. People began questioning his wife about this, to which she replied, I like having fun. I think I have a beautiful body, and I love taking and sharing pictures. I wouldn't ever post actual nudes. I'm not fishing for compliments or trying to inflate my ego. Guys are proud of their cars and guns. I'm proud of the body I take care of. I'm having a good time, laughing with friends, and enjoying the beauty of the human body. Nick is my only partner. We don't f*** around. We aren't swingers. But I also don't care what other people do. It's none of my business. I'll let you be the judge of what that means. As for Nick, he eventually explained the bottle picks. I have this locals live chat. Shout out to them. Pretty wild. It runs like 24 hours. Someone came up with this idea to do... Wednesday and um, people decided to post the bottle challenge, I guess. And uh, I thought maybe like I should participate because like a whole bunch of my people are sitting here like posting their mm -hmm. And so I took a joke picture of my and posted it in my locals. And now what I have learned about myself since then <laughs> is not what I expected. I have learned rather than just having a skinny white boy, I am not a Christian. My wife is now <laughs> And, uh, I am a cuckold watching other men have sex with her. Oh yeah, I'm a bad dad and my kids will be scarred for life. <laughs> <laughs> this already looked pretty weird, but believe me, it gets worse. Let me ask you a simple question here. Do you know what a baldo is? You're about to find out. From mid to late 2022, for whatever reason, Nick found himself discussing the baldo multiple times, even reviewing it at one point. It's a kind of torture device looking toy that turns your test 
pulls into a second um, uh, shaft. Based on what I can glean from these, his Baldo review was originally meant exclusively for locals, but quickly made its way to the hands of clip channels and Kiwi farmers who'd already become disillusioned with Nick. The main domino piece that had to be tipped over in order for Nick's reputation with his following to be dragged through the mud came in the form of a rather innocuous video in which Nick and his wife celebrated their 18th marriage anniversary. In it, they reveal they're on vacation in the Caribbean, but don't specify where or even what country in the Caribbean. As usual, we can leave it up to KF to schizophrenically investigate the most ridiculous things and succeed in doing it. There are a few posts going over the specific strategies they employed in order to figure out where they were staying, such as comparing nude pictures they'd posted of themselves to the marketing material of a certain resort called Hedonism 2, which was famous for harboring swinger parties. We obviously can't show the bottom of this picture, but the shape of the island on the horizon is similar, and the difference in sizes can easily be explained by photography. Eventually, both Nick and his wife's Instagram accounts began following two male strippers by the names of Ricardo and Romaine, both of whom worked at Hedonism 2, and they followed Nick back. Honestly, I don't think this much schizo research was necessary since Nick was already well on the path to admitting it anyway. One example of his lack of concern about denying it and maintaining his image was when he got asked about hedonism during a live stream, and this is all he had to say. Nick, did you see that conspiracy theory? And I had to know this because, you know, I joke about this all the time. You talk about the ball, though. Did you see there's an internet rumor about the hedonism where you are at a sex resort? I have to know. I've been looking. I have to know if that's the case. <laughs> it's simple. Uh, I don't talk about where I go, but all internet rumors are always true. Okay. Yeah. Additionally, he openly admitted to doing MDMA and mushrooms during this vacation, which once again informed the audience of what kind of person Nick was becoming. A little while after the Hedonism 2 event came and went, another popped up. On December 15th, 2022, Nick said he was going with his wife to an underwear bar to celebrate his birthday. You cannot get in if you're wearing clothes. You have to wear underwear. Yeah. She's what, in underwear, it? I'm in underwear. How? We're gonna go have a we're gonna go have a blast. Um that's Saturday. Friday is karaoke night at the same bar we're gonna go do karaoke night we're gonna have have and fun, probably, you know, sing some shitty songs or whatever, and then I don't know what we're gonna do the rest of the time because those are only, it's literally an hour out of each night that we're gonna do that. Other than that, I don't know. She's got a bunch of surprises planned for me. Again, I have no idea why he keeps being so vague about this stuff since he's talking about embarrassing shit anyway. If you're gonna drunk blab about your private degeneracy in public, you might as well be specific because people are gonna figure it out. Once again, KF was on the job and correlated the underwear bar statement with with a few other things he'd said about his birthday plans, eventually landing on a certain establishment called Gay 90s, which was the only one holding an underwear party at exactly the same time Nick was going to attend one, in the same city Nick had claimed it was going to take place. The schizophrenia goes to another level when the same poster who collected this information managed to use Snapchat to find people who posted videos of themselves at Gay 90s during the time Nick would have been there, and they managed to find this clip with a somewhat recognizable voice talking in the background. Again, none of this is particularly damning were it not for the fact that Nick, for a very long time, made fun of cucks and joked about gay people from the perspective of someone who wasn't in line with those lifestyles. Now, he was attending underwear parties in gay bars and going to swinger resorts. Though this part is a lot less relevant compared to the previous revelations, Nick also decided to gift himself a Mustang GT500. And though I'm sure he made a lot of money off of YouTube, we have to remember that a significant part of what's allowed all of this to take place was, allegedly, Grand Pa Owen's tugboat money, who I can only imagine is doing cartwheels in the grave. But being the derelict alcoholic he already was at this point, it comes as no surprise that within 48 hours of him having the Mustang, Dex, one of his main and longtime associates, revealed in the stream that Nick wasn't going to be streaming because he had driven his car off the road, presumably damaging the vehicle since it had to be towed away. Nick himself, however, doesn't seem to have admitted to this happening since his post about not streaming that night never mentions it. Despite having been visibly irritated by people's speculation about his midlife crisis, he tries to downplay it. Nick, you're getting eviscerated by Kiwi Farms. You gotta chill, dude. Maybe you don't know. Kiwi Farms influence? That's what it is. It's worth noting that at this point, one can frequently notice Nick is jittering during his streams. That's what happens to someone who is so frequently drunk that their body gets used to inebriation to the point that whenever they're insufficiently under the influence, their body uncontrollably shakes. Meanwhile, Nick's YouTube career trudged on without much of a hitch, as the average viewer was still turning in to see things like his interview with Kyle Rittenhouse. However, the closer following was heavily disconnecting from seeing what Nick was saying about his personal life, essentially rewriting himself as this liberal routine person who was never morally opposed to the things he was now partaking in. Oh no! 
Homie, I've always been a sex pervert. It's also at this point that he slowly begins to lose weight, further worrying the people concerned for his health, especially since now he was open about doing other drugs besides alcohol. Whatever cloud he retained with other content creators <laughs> was soon to run out if he continued on his path of self-destruction. <laughs> right now, I'll take another brief detour to tell you about a rabbit hole that is Nick's relationship with someone named Mandy. For starters, here is a clip of Nick talking to them. Mandy. If I was single, if I were single, you would never be single again. Pretty unusual stuff for a married guy to say in a public That'd live stream, creepy. but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Mandy had been an avid super chatter since at least 2020, and a former follower of Nick's posted some lore to KF, saying, I can confirm that Mandy and one of the chat mods, C. Goody, were flirting, at least as far as them saying it in chat on Nick's night streams sometime around Rittenhouse. While we do have an archived comment from C. Goody confirming that they were at least close and on very good terms with each other, Mandy's relevance is made evident in one moment during a very drunk stream of Nick's in which he says, Look, Mandy, I'm telling you this right now, Mandy, show up to Anime Matsuri. I will 100%, I will sign your t this is some true hypergamy at work here. Mandy went from flirting with one of the mods to being one, all the way to flirting with a big man himself. Apparently, there was a strong push behind the scenes for Mandy to actually go to the anime Matsuri thing so that their IRL meetup could happen. But Mandy was the one who had shut it down hard, according to one of the people who claimed to have familiarity with the inner workings of Rikada's community. But, much to his embarrassment and our cringe enjoyment about what I'm about to make you witness, it didn't stop at his awkward-ass flirting. It evolved all the way to him serenading Mandy during a stream. Oh, Mandy, you came and you teased with the picture. Yeah, I mean, I own seven days. I'll install it, I guess. Not right now. Wait, buy seven days to download. No, I, I have it installed. Eventually, all of this culminated in the clip I played earlier, where we can see Nick, a husband and father of five, shirtless, nipples protruding, disgusting, gratuitously fawning over some random chick who's posting boobs in his locals chat. This was such a re move on his part that it even got him to recognize that it was a mistake and one of the miraculous instances of Nick expressing regret over an action of his. In Discord messages he exchanged with someone who had asked him about the weird, parasocial, and sexual relationship he was developing with his fans on Locals, along with the rumors being spread on KF, he said, I've made loads of changes in everything I do since December. You know what I learned? No one cares. No one gets unpissed. The majority of people don't notice. Trying to fight people's fictions is exhausting and unproductive. There's a genre of fiction created about my life now, and it's wildly interesting, but reality is much more mundane. I'm a busy husband and father who has to balance the realities of a crammed family schedule with being an accessible member of new media. You bring up the Mandy thing. Yeah, it was a bad couple of minutes, and of course, I asked Alyssa, the owner of the Clips channel, to take it down. I was in a real shitty slump for a lot of reasons and exceedingly intoxicated. The fun side of streaming is that your worst moments have the same chances of being recorded as your best. That was a bad one, and it hurt a lot of people. I could try and wrangle excuses for it, but I never have. My wife, does not have an OnlyFans where she sells nude pictures or videos. Some people have a problem with pictures we post in locals, and that's fine. But frankly, I never found those pictures to be sexually suggestive or even that risque. For a brief moment, he seems to have become lucid about his excessive alcohol consumption harming his judgment. But the same cannot be said for the pictures he and his wife posted to locals. Again, not to judge, <laughs> but I think you'll have a hard time saying that an up-close Don't post your news to the internet. Did you know the pictures on the internet don't die? They'll be there 2,000 years from now. 2,000 years from now.
picture of a woman's butt in lingerie isn't risque. It's sad enough that Nick stooped this low in the first place for essentially no reason. He had nothing to gain, and everything to lose as far as his reputation went. However, it gets a little more sad and embarrassing when you discover that there's more to me. 70 years. No, it's educational. This patch took forever. Oh, am I done with copper? Yes, I am. Hey, silver ingots. Mandy than meets the eye. For starters, Mandy suspiciously could never make her microphone work and take part in the voice chat. And that old picture of her boobs was discovered to be taken from a monitor as opposed to simply posted directly to the chat. This prompted the schizophrenic KF gumshoes to get on it once more, and they quickly found out that all of the pictures Mandy had ever sent were stolen from random places online, resized, and edited to make it look like it was taken from a bad Nokia phone. Eventually, it was discovered Mandy was from Israel and had played over five thousand hours of Team Fortress 2. Upon finding this out, the immediate conclusion everyone jumped to was that Mandy was a man with a dick. <laughs> 
A circumcised one of that, if the Israel thing is true. It's technically uncertain that Mandy is a man, but it was proven beyond the shadow of a doubt that they were a catfish. Though I'm not too sure Nick would even care if his parasocial girlfriend came with an extra frankfurter. Fortunately for Nick, this never resulted in some kind of big Mandy gate moment and just continued to be discussed in KF. However, one threat, if we can call it a threat, did rear its head during August 2023, when Nick was sued. The validity of this lawsuit, however, is highly questionable, because it was a RICO case, which, if you don't know, is the kind of lawsuit usually put together to break up organized crime activity. In reality, it seemed to be a glorified defamation and hate speech thing, dressed up as a RICO for whatever reason. And because of how stupid that was, it never really got off the ground. No, for Nick to be taken down with an injustice like this would be much too poetic, too heroic and ending for his story. It would take a martyr, and that he is not. He is a lol cow, plain and simple, and a self-made one at that, with more than enough opportunities to redeem himself, or at least preserve his image by not exposing humiliating details of his private life at random to the strangers watching his streams. When he was given the opportunity to put his foot in his mouth and say something dumb that would make him look like a goofball, he embraced it wholeheartedly. For example, in September 2023, someone in his chat brought up the topic of how moms having only fans can negatively affect their kids, as the children would be embarrassed that their parent had that as a job. Nick disagreed. I think a lot of them just say, yeah, this is what mommy started doing and it's why we go to Disney every year. I think that's what they do. I think they just tell them because they're gonna and find out. And I would assume that their logic would be, you know what? This is a very safe way for mommy to do this. It's how mommy puts food on the table. And so I can do this and work from home and be with you and hang out all day and we can do fun trips or I can go be a secretary and have people stare at my chest uh, without paying me. With this cope, the thread of prophecy was severed and Nick chose to persist in the doomed world he'd created for himself. Reality itself decided that enough was enough and it was time for him to meet the consequences of his actions and lifestyle, and it did so by invoking the cursed talisman of the Ancient One. It says, the stars are aligned, a new host is chosen, hail unto thee, Nick Chan Rikadachu. And then with that came this, and I, this was so weird, because this came before the mention of Sonic in the trademark dispute uh, that we were talking about last night. A Sonichu <laughs> medallion <laughs> has um, been passed to me. I don't know where this came from. It was at this moment that his downfall became inevitable. In January 2024, Nick took part in a debate with Destiny, and though many people considered him to have won the debate due to his better understanding of the law, Nick was visibly worn down. His clothes looked too large on him due to weight loss, and his face was more sunken than usual. While he was remarkably sober during his interaction with Destiny, probably because he knew what he was getting into and didn't want to make himself look like a total idiot, none of this composure was found on his streams, which hit a new low. Message you have for your haters. Thank you for showing up. Try being less poor. Have you ever considered the fact anybody who is willing to sit for hours and hours of time like for a camera just so that maybe five people, but hopefully way more, maybe 500, maybe 5,000, but maybe five people sit and look at them and go, God damn, I want to show my fist in their face. He'd never been this drunk out of his mind before. Additionally, around the Mandy you incident, sure? it seemed like he actually tried to back off from the alcohol, but evidently, this effort wasn't very successful. He's incoherent, talking about random insane shit, almost like he's hallucinating. To add to the general sadness of this situation, he was now pretending to have some kind of deal with Rumble to make money off of his streams. Though it's very dubious this was the case, since at this point, his online presence was a shell of its former self, and even the normies had turned out, since his general wet-brained drunkenness turned every stream into to an insufferable slog. In May, all of this came to a head, literally as we're about to find out. Nick fires up the nightmare stream, where he's in complete disarray, completely out of his mind, slurring his words, and constantly moving around in very strange ways. Many people thought back to his claim to have done among other things, during his stay at Hedonism, since there's some correlation between hard drugs and sensorial stims like rubbing your own skin. At one point, Nick received a super chat that contained a link to furry inflation fart but due to being drunk past the point of recognition, he developed a kind of temporary form of Alzheimer's and went on to open this link six different times, reacting to it in a different way each time as if he was just seeing it. Unlike many of his streams that go on for almost 10 hours, this one fast approached its end at a mere four after this happened. Oh, 
great heavens! Funnily enough, even after this, he struggled for another half an hour to successfully shut his stream down. But obviously the damage was done, and his shameful moment was destined to be permanently immortalized. Nick had done a DSP, or had he? You see, the immediate assumption was that Nick decided impromptu to feel himself up, but the truth seems to indicate otherwise. Andy Worski, of all people, decided to do a deep dive into this catastrophic stream and managed to enhance the audio enough to catch that someone entered Nick's office, a woman who may or may not be his wife, but we'll get into that soon, and decided to give him you know, on stream. Tragically depressing and insane as this stream was, it may have actually been the straw that broke the camel's back, as immediately afterward, the not-so-unthinkable happened. Nick was arrested due to a mandatory reporter's concerns regarding child neglect. The search warrant that led to Nick's arrest has since been published, and I'll be reading its relevant parts right now. Nick resides with his wife and five children, ages 6 to 16. The reporter indicated that four people from the church had gone to him, reporting neglect to the children, possible controlled substance abuse, and a questionable relationship relationship with an additional couple. It was reported that he and his wife Kayla had befriended hosts from a different local social media blogger. Those individuals were identified as Aaron and April. It was reported that this couple may have been staying with the Ricadas and the home was in disarray and cluttered. It was reported by a church preschool teacher that the children had complained of being hungry, not being fed, and wearing the same clothes for three to four days at a time and would start to smell. Nicholas was reported to be lethargic and appeared high or drugged driving a car around. Another individual advised the reporter that Nick will walk out randomly during sermons at church and has noticed behavioral changes in him. It was alleged Kayla looks anorexic and Nicholas has lost a substantial amount of weight recently. One individual described Nicholas as having injection or track marks on his arms. While reviewing Aaron's social media video blogs, Aaron goes on to say that he has experimented with cocaine three times and six or seven times in the past. Aaron did a video blog where he said Nicholas needs help and needs to get help for his kids because of his substance abuse. Aaron points out a time in the video where Nicholas has a white powdery substance on his nose. On the next page, the officer also remarks that during the same nightmare stream, Nick takes an hour-long bathroom break at one point and comes back with what looks to be white dust on his nose. These bathroom breaks aren't news to the people following Ricada's downfall, and as a matter of fact, they've been exhaustively documented as they've been getting progressive longer since December 2023, going from 3 to 4 minutes to 6 to 8 minutes to frequent breaks over 10 minutes, indicating that this was Nick doing drugs. The search warrant was approved and carried out, and we also have documents on how that went. The cops went to the Ricada residence in the morning and happened to catch Nick driving as they approached. They stopped Nick and tried to enter the house with him, but he wouldn't provide them with a code to open the door. They proceeded to ram the door open, only to find the house in complete disarray, with clothes everywhere, dirty dishes, and dust. Keep in mind, four of the kids were in the house as this happened. All in all, they found eight tablets of ketamine, over 25 grams of eight tablets in multiple ketamine. different baggies, two 22 casings, a six hour AR, a bunch of paraphernalia, so most of which tested positive, and more unspecified firearms in the garage. Nick refused to speak about the drugs, but Kayla, presumably in an act of pure drug stupidity, asked the officers for her medication, and once they brought the prescription bottle she was asking for, they looked inside and found two unknown pills and gummies, neither of which matched the label on the bottle. Soon after the arrest, the mug shots were released, showing Nick with a black eye, Kayla looking completely strung out, and April, who was brought in with them. April, and by extension, the Imholt couple are a can of worms in their own right, but as was noted in the search warrant, at first, they were just visiting each other, and something happened to prompt April and Aaron to separate, with April beginning JRPGs to- JRPGs seem to have a reputation for being just a bit on the easy side. If things get hard, just spend a few minutes leveling up and you'll be fine, right? Well, not in these games. Here, I'll be presenting the top 10 hardest JRPGs ever made. Now, don't get me wrong. These are not bad. But you didn't put JRPGs in the, the title, so you clickbaited me a little bit. What is it? Is it that one one? Damn it, see, you know, there was a game I wanted to buy, I thought there was like, what was it, it was like, um, uh, Life is Feudal, Your Own, 
and I didn't buy that because I knew I knew it would take up too much time. I don't like my caster character, but I kind of want to start her over as like a uh, like a sword and board character on mortal. But I don't really want to play Mortal over something like New World. I might embrace New World a little bit more. There's always more to do. Uh, hardcore RPGs. Let's try like Hardcore. Yeah, I could look at some Hardcore modes. I could look at Final Fantasy Hardcore on Black Mage, which would be interesting. I could kill one of my bank alts. Darkest Dungeon is horror, but I mean, uh, wait, what was that sound? Oh, yeah, the door. Yeah, the door. Uh, I'm keep going. Stalker Gamma could be good. What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today, in the world of indie games, we're going to be descending into deep Ukraine for a little bit of dark, radioactive monster hunting adventure. Today it's time for us to take a look at Stalker Anomaly Gamma, and I don't think I can praise this game highly enough. When it comes to sandbox gameplay, hardcore survival, when it comes to gun modding, <coughs> when it comes to just interesting procedural and emergent situations that come up inside the context of a video game, this is the quintessential sandbox that every hardcore gamer that's into things like The Long War should definitely check out. This is a slow, the Long War, is that what you said? This is the quintessential sandbox that every hardcore gamer that's into things like The Long War should definitely... The Long War? What is that? Oh, XCOM, Long War. Yeah, Long War, okay, okay. Check out. This is a slow, atmospheric, violent slog through an area that does not care that you're the main character and is actively going out of its way to kill you the entire time. While you are here, you will join factions. You will fight against enemies. You will take on procedural quests. You will participate in new zones that have been added by the over 400 mods that have been put on top of Stalker Anomaly. And Anomaly itself is a full overhaul conversion mod that's put on top of the original Stalker. So there's a lot of content here dragging Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl, and Call of Pripyat much further down the line to... Yeah, but I mean, I, like, I, already, I just bought Chernobylite. Chernobyl's good, but I mean, I'm patching a game right now. Now it's installing. This took forever. I did not want this to do this to my session, but I think I needed a, a slower pace for a little bit. Gamma looks good, but like...
Yep. Yeah, I just watched that kill, and I was like, yep, straight down with the 12 gauge. Towards something like Tarkov, but with a heavy, heavy horror and violent survival bent uh, than what it was previously. It's got a fully fleshed out crafting system. It's got base building. It's got new maps that were custom made by... It's got base building? ...by the creators of Gamma uh, that just add on to the world. There's like over 40 maps on this game now, if I'm remembering the number correctly. And even though we've covered the game before, it's time for us to come back to it because they've still been updating it and they've still been adding stuff to it since the last time we covered it like a year and a half ago. So come along with me. Put on your gas mask, swap out your filter, make sure your magazine is full, and let's take a look at Stalker Gamma. Uh, welcome on in, folks. Hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to be taking a look at... The engine still looks like garbage, though. I'm sorry, but it doesn't look fun to sit on. Like, not all day. God damn it, you took forever. You say five minutes, I don't believe you. ...to stay at the Rokeda's permanently, supposedly as a live-in girlfriend. The people following Nick closely noticed that something was different, as they often heard noises that weren't coming from him, and saw a person in the corner of his office who didn't look to be his wife. One KF user even speculated that it was April. When the arrest happened, April's husband, Aaron, happened to be streaming... Like, I played Mage on, um, I, I did Tamer on, um, Mortal 2, and it wasn't good enough. It, like, wasn't good enough. It's too much work to go train. It's, it's all, it all takes too much work. And I'm thinking that I need to play a hard melee. And while Taming is cool... I don't know, my spear person's good. They're like good, but there's nothing to do. There's nothing to do in this stupid game. Like the game doesn't have a map. It's it's not fun like New World. I'm just gonna play New World. I think it's a better game than a lot of these other games. New World's annoying, but it's easy to drift off in, into. See now you jump to fifteen minutes. You're so annoying. For a C drive. Is it because I'm I'm not looking at it or whatever? Yeah, like like take a look at the install and just make it go faster or whatever. I like that guy, uh, Splattercat Gaming. I think he's actually very educational. I make impressions videos for indie games. Yep, the free hardcore survival RPG that my weekend stuck really to burn to enjoy single player Tarkov. What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of, well, not really indie games, but in the world of video games, we're going to be checking out single player... Yeah, I liked Tarkov. My problem with Tarkov was the hackers. It was it was clear since day one. I thought it was like twice as bad as Rust. Tarkov, and this is actually one of those very rare videos where I have an opinion about what's going on. And so we're going to check out single player Tarkov. And as you saw from the title of the video... You don't have to pay 250 bucks in order to play single player Tarkov. You can go download it from the mod site right now, and you can just do that if you already own Escape from Tarkov. So a little bit of backstory here. Escape from Tarkov is probably one of the most immersive gun building, <laughs> survival RPG, looter shooters, tactical military sims out there. There are very few people that have not heard about this game or who are not aware of it. It went crazy viral a long time ago. And ever since then, it has rode that wave of sentiment to financial success. However, along the way, the company that develops the game, Battlestate Games, has made a number of mistakes and their heading has been kind of strange. And so coming from my perspective as someone that used to be an Escape from Tarkov streamer circa 2017, 2018, I think when I first started playing Escape from Tarkov, got him, I think uh, I'm actually doing live commentary right now while playing the game because that's just how I like to run my operation. Why not? But as I was saying, I like it. Um, I used to be a Tarkov streamer back when this game only oh, had really? factory and customs. I, think I remember, like three yeah, days, factory, factory and, 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 and woods, and, and I woods. think like three yep. days after I started playing Tarkov, they patched to put Shoreline in the game. Did I get him right there? I got him. He's hiding out in the bushes, but I was a little bit worried about it, dude. 
Uh, I used to be a Tarkov streamer back when the game was in its infancy, when it was first starting out. And I streamed it for years, actually probably four days a week. That's what I did for a good long time, because I was a true believer in this game. Uh, but over the years, Battlestate Games has made a number of controversial decisions that ultimately led to me no longer playing Tarkov at all on the live servers. I kind of gave it up. Stop playing. Didn't really enjoy myself anymore. Bad, bad cheaters the killed the game. game. On. I saw the stupid cocksuckers who think they're good because they cheat all the time. But like some of the decisions the company were making were sort of inching towards this line that I wasn't willing to cross. And so I went yeah. full variety, which is where I've been to this day. However, recently they have a controversy that they are embroiled in, uh, wherein they took, they have a number of different packages when you go to purchase this game that all give you different bonuses, and some of them are like inching closer to like pay to win, but ultimately a lot of it, a lot of it was kind of like plausibly deniable. It gave you a little bit of a head start, but at the end of the day, everything was unlockable inside of the game as you were playing. Uh, you could get it all yourself. Some people even like that grind. For example, when I'm playing single-player Tarkov, I always go zero to hero, even though I'm an owner of the EOD edition going back to 2018. Yeah, I'm owner of EOD as well. Uh, but recently, they released a new package that removed a bunch of the bonuses from EOD and added them into a higher-up package that costs more money, and there are a bunch of things in the higher-up package, the $250 package, the Unheard edition, that are definitely kind of, well, not even kind of, they are definitely pay to win. And so there's a number of people taking to the internet. I might be a little bit late with this video. I don't really have a Tark. This game sucked, though, kind of. It was far too clunky and slow. Of channel, so I don't. Kind of like Mortal. Like, I like the Mortal killing experience. Eh. But I didn't really do Dex Footy. I did Tamer, and now I think I want to drop all those points out of Taming, really, because it's like this, it doesn't get me anywhere. The return to my main, and maybe not play Spear anymore. I mean, I don't know. It's hard. But then do what though? There's not. There's like there's all these systems in Mortal, but I feel like I've seen what I need to see about the game. It's weird. Like, my problem these days is, is uh, like, my desire to play the games. It's weird. Like, for, 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 for months there, I was burning up to play Rust. And then I did for, like, three three. It's been, what? It's been, like, what, two weeks now? I've been playing solid Rust almost every day. And now I'm like, oh, I need a replacement. Something I can play in the background like like uh like like new world that, that'll just be there for me like that play you know why do you patch in the middle of the fucking prime time it's so annoying i don't know exactly how this video is going to be received i'd be surprised i think this video is great and i'm going to like and sub to your channel thank you splatter cat gaming for the excellent um time uh, excellent uh you know content for my stream i'd like to sub to your channel Yep, same thing I was doing Daisy. I would run a private server and just PVE the environment using mods and making adjustments to the server. Games sound, games like this and Stalker give me those same me against the wasteland vibes. There's totally an audience for this kind of experience. There is. I want this kind of experience. I will say I, I do, but Tarkov wasn't good enough. Tarkov wasn't even as good as uh, the one he mentioned, uh, like Stalker. I wouldn't really say it was more beautiful than Stalker. It's a really truly beautiful game. But it's, yeah, I don't want to support their product. Yep, single player talk off if you if you previously purchased a copy of the game. You know, single player Tarkov might be really fucking fun. Without idiot fucking jack off losers sniping you all the time. Yeah, like, cause you have like that, that hideout that you improve. Like, it's weird because I looked at Chernobylite and I'm like, yeah, but this isn't good. Like, this isn't good. Like, uh, like, uh, like Tarkov is. And I'm like, I know that Chernob Chernobylite is not as good as Tarkov. Like, I don't know.
It's a nice comment, but I don't want to leave it. if anybody actually watched it but I'm just going to put it out there that you don't need to pay $250 in order to get a single player Tarkov experience the unheard of addition the main catch there is that you get a bunch of bonuses in game but you also unlock a co-op and single player you mode that is there. playable and they want 250 bucks for it when in my opinion this should just be a core baseline feature that is packaged splatter, into every single edition of the game. $250 is an especially egregious price. I think this video would be a lot more difficult to make if they had just been like, oh yeah, it's a $10 add-on. If you pay $10, you can play single-player Tarkov, and we've got it networked up so that you can play with your friends. Unfortunately, they decided to package that up for $250, and the elephant in the room that you can look at right now is that what I'm playing on your screen at the moment is a single-player mod for Escape from Tarkov. It is free, it is incredibly easy to install, it's very enjoyable. Like, this game gets worlds better once you detach it from the servers the over at Battle people. State Games. Yeah, oh god. Those servers were so shitty. Seven-minute queue-ins or whatever. And so, this is, in my opinion, probably the quintessential way for you to play Escape Tarkov. from Tarkov if you're interested in a single-player.